Thanks to Brilliant for supporting this episode of SciShow. Go to brilliant.org slash scishow if you're interested in investing in your STEM skills this year. If you've ever ended up with a nasty rash from using skincare products, especially oily or heavily scented ones, you're not the only one. A lot of people react to certain compounds found in these products. Around 50% of people who use these products will experience this allergic reaction, known as contact dermatitis. But researchers may have finally figured out why these pesky rashes happen and how to prevent them. Right now, the main way to treat contact dermatitis is just to avoid products that contain certain chemicals. But if you've ever had this problem, you know that that actually is a really long list. And before now, scientists simply didn't understand how these rashes happen. See, allergic reactions are often triggered by specific molecules called peptides, and those trigger immune cells known as T cells. But skincare products don't typically have those kinds of peptides in them. What's more, the molecules they do have are thought to be too small to be seen by T cells. But last week, in a paper published in the journal Science Immunology, Researchers showed that a molecule found in our skin called CD1A binds to certain skincare chemicals, making them visible to T cells. It basically rats them out to your immune system. The researchers identified several common skincare substances that were able to cause a T cell response by binding with CD1A. Two molecules found in a commonly used vanilla scented oil, benzyl benzoate and benzyl cinnamate, got T cells fired up when they were bound with CD1A. The researchers looked even more closely at another allergen known as Farnesol. They found that rather than just sitting on the surface of CD1A, it actually binds deep inside it, displacing natural skin oils that would normally be there. That meant T cells weren't simply recognizing the chemical structure of Farnesol on the CD1A, but instead they were recognizing changes to the shape of CD1A itself. The researchers think they might be able to identify other compounds that can compete with Farnesol for a spot binding to CD1A without causing an immune response, offering some hope of preventing contact dermatitis. Another idea getting a lot of attention this month comes from a pair of papers that claim to show how artificial intelligence can be trained to detect cancer more efficiently than doctors. The first study published last week in the journal Nature outlined an algorithm for detecting breast cancer from mammograms, which are essentially x-rays of breast tissue. Researchers first trained the AI to recognize cancer by showing it tens of thousands of mammograms from women in the U.S. and U.K. with a confirmed diagnosis. They then tested that AI on different scans of around 26,000 women in the U.K. and 3,000 women in the U.S., and compared the results with the initial diagnosis made by expert radiologists. The algorithm actually caught cancer on images where it had been missed by the doctors who initially examined those mammograms. That would be a false negative when we're saying the thing isn't there, but it actually is. And it reduced false negatives by 9.4% for the U.S. dataset and 2.7% for the U.K. dataset. U.K. doctors always get a second opinion, which might help explain the difference. This is very good because doctors can miss up to one in every five cases of breast cancer, so even a few percentage points could be helpful. The AI also lowered the rate of false positives, where it looks like cancer is there but it actually isn't, by around 5% for the U.S. group and around 1% for the U.K. group. The second study published this week in Nature Medicine used a similar method to train an AI to detect brain cancer. Researchers trained their AI on a data set of 2.5 million images of brain tissue from several hundred patients. But when it came to testing the AI, these researchers did it in real time. They took two samples of brain tissue from 278 patients during surgery and gave one to their AI and one to a team of pathologists. The computer would then create detailed images of the brain tissue and then analyze them using an algorithm. The humans would go off to the lab and look at the same samples the old-fashioned way, using a microscope. The AI did slightly better than the experts here, too, getting the diagnosis right 94.6% of the time, compared to the 93.9% of the time for the humans. But what's really amazing about this technique was the speed. The AI could predict brain cancer right there in the operating room in about two and a half minutes, instead of the roughly 30 
30 minutes it would take for humans to do it. And that is very powerful, because when doctors are operating on your brain, they want to be really sure about their diagnosis. Now, these studies don't mean cancer diagnosis is solved forever. One concern about algorithms in general is that they're only as good as the data set they're trained on. So if the data set doesn't include people of different races or sexes, then the AI might not work as well for those groups of people. Like, if the disease manifests itself differently in, say, men with breast cancer. They also wouldn't work for diagnosing rare tumors because there isn't enough data to use for training the algorithms. Plus, it's currently unclear exactly how to use AIs in real-life hospital scenarios. Doctors could use them alongside their own expertise to help them diagnose disease. However, a 2015 study suggested that other computer-aided methods of detecting breast cancer didn't improve accuracy and may have actually made things worse. In addition, some physicians have raised questions about these studies, suggesting that we should be identifying patients with dangerous but curable cancers, not teaching artificial intelligence just to find as many cancers as possible. Especially when those lesions could be harmless, leading to unnecessary treatment. In other words, the question no longer seems to be whether we can train AIs to help us find cancer, but how they should be used to do that. If you're interested in understanding more about how the AIs we talked about today can detect breast cancer, you might like the computer science courses over at Brilliant.org. They even have a machine learning course, which will show you how computers learn and why training them is so important. In addition to computer science, Brilliant offers courses related to science, engineering, and math. They're a great way to understand the world better in the new year. The courses are designed by talented educators and lifelong learners from top institutions, so you know they know how to make things stick. And courses are available offline via Brilliant's iOS and Android apps. The first 200 people to sign up at Brilliant.org slash SciShow will get 20% off an annual premium subscription. And by checking them out, you're also helping support SciShow. So thanks. 